Warning, the movie I'm about to talk about today is such a disaster, such a catastrophe, that I would rather choke on my own hairballs than have to rewatch this thing again. The feline fantasy Broadway drama I'm talking about today is, of course, none other than... Pause for drama. Like cat paws. I'm talking about cats. This movie review is requested by Matt Sclaro. He's a Patreon at the Mithril level, and he's also a friend. And now my worst enemy, by making me sit through this pile of cat dung. And not only did I watch cats, but I took copious notes, so we can live through this misery together. Without any further cat do, let's talk cats, baby. We are introduced to this wonderful new exciting world by a human throwing a cat out into the alleyway. Typical, awful humans. Thankfully for our new feline friend, she's not alone, as there's cats all over this alley, ready to make their acquaintance. Like acquaintance, that one didn't work. And thus begins our journey into the horrible world of cat music. This whole thing's chock full of garbage. And the first song might be the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. It's all about Jellico cats, what they do, how they act, what they look like. And from what I can tell so far, a Jellico cat is every single cat. So essentially they're saying cat cat to me. The song goes on for what feels like three hours. Idris Elba is kind of lurking in the shadows. Can't wait to see what he's all about. I think he's the bad guy because he's the only black cat. So I just assume. I'm joking, there's a couple others. All the cats suck, so it doesn't really matter who's good, who's bad. It's, it's all bad. Idris then saunters up to the other kitties and introduces himself as McCavity Cat. He is the threat. He's gonna win the Jellico Ball this year. That's the thing that this movie revolves around, the Jellico Ball. The new cat frolics away before some other pussies stop her. She introduces herself as Victoria, in which another cat says, yeah, that's one of your names, but we have three names. Cats have three names for some dumb fucking reason. Things get oddly sexual from this point going forward as the cats start to do an interpretive dance under the pale moonlight. Second song kicks in. It's about the cats going to the Jellico Ball. They mention a wise old sage cat named Old Deuteronomy who's gonna pick the cat that's gonna lead the charge at the Jellico Ball, which I assume is nothing more than an actual ball that leads into a cat orgy. I mean, otherwise, what are we doing here? This is the worst song in the movie so far. The main male cat, if you can call any of these male, takes Victoria to see one of the front runners for the Jellico cat at the ball, where, again, they become leader, and I think they sail away into the moon to, be, to become a new cat altogether, reborn. W why? What is the point of any of this? But anyway, yeah, they go to see this new cat. It's a Gumby cat. Rebel Wilson, fat, stupid, clumsy, not my words, it's their words. I agree with them. As I stated, Rebel Wilson gets the dishonor of playing this embarrassing thing who gets to stumble and fall, play with herself, and be an all-around shit show. At one point, cockroaches start dancing and a marching band looks like something out of a rejected scene from Joe's apartment. I didn't want this funky towel. The lyrics are literally, I've got a Gumby jelly cat. Who in the fuck? came up with this idea. I know it's based on a Broadway musical that's equally as weird, but this is a whole other level. We have anthropomorphic cats walking around. I read somewhere online, which makes it true, that at one point these CG abominations had cat assholes that they had to digitally remove from the final cut of the film. They at one point animated assholes into this thing. How did this get a dollar? let alone a hundred million to be made. Jason Derulo is shot out of a cannon, comes into this thing, singing his heart out about some rum tum tugger cat. I guess that's his name. It's becoming increasingly clear that every cat that's introduced has a large amount of catitude and is going to spend the next several minutes singing about themselves to the audience so we know who this cat is. He's wearing a fur coat, which makes things all the more confusing. That's like me wearing a skin coat of my fallen friends. It's bizarre. It's the least of this movie's problems, but I want to point it out. Tugger at one point yells out, MILK! And they all head on over to the milk bar so they can drink themselves stupid. This is the worst song in the movie so far, and we have an hour and a half to go. Now we have a Jennifer Hudson cat stumbling out of another alleyway, 
just a sad sack of shit singing about how her life used to be great, how she could have been Jellico but isn't. She used to be a star. Now she's a cat's been. Not even a few minutes later, here comes James Corden into the picture. He's playing a talentless fat ass hack. So he's just playing himself. His name? Buster for Jones. And he also dreams of being a Jellico leader. His goal, of course, is to ascend and be resurrected as a thin cat instead of the fat piece of trash he currently is in the film and in real life. This is really the plot of the movie. Oh, and also, subscribe for fat shaming. Oh, look out, Victoria! She's ambushed by two cool cats. Their names? Mungo Jerry and Rumple Teaser. Oh, <laughs> kill me. These are the dumbest fucking names I've ever heard in my life. They, shocker, sing a song about being naughty little cats as they dance and prance around their owner's house, knocking over shit, and just being all around garbage animals. Our lead cat is trying on some of the fancy jewelry in the house. She's even rocking what I only can imagine are some fancy Victorian anal beads. This is the worst song in the movie so far. But uh-oh, look out, Victoria! There's a dog on the way up that lives in the house. She heard a racket. She's gonna see what's going on. The two cats bolt, leaving Victoria behind, and she's trapped to the side of the bed by the beads. <sighs> this is exactly how I thought I was gonna go out. <sighs> Breaks the anal beads and gets out of there just in the nick of time. <laughs> what a rush. We then cut to McCavity Cat, who has catnapped two of the fat kitties in the film. Put them on a barge somewhere out at sea. What is his plan? What are you up to, McCavity, you son of a bitch? We're back with Victoria, who is being treated to the worst song in the film so far. Sang by Dane Judy Dench. Or as I like to call her in this movie, Dane Duty Dench. Duty sings about how she's old, frail, has brittle bones, and is an all-around complete waste of life who's just kind of getting by, counting down the days until she dies off. But she also has the important task of picking the next Jellico leader. If you look closely, you can spot Ian McKellen in the background. He's just randomly in this scene. I'm not even sure he's CG or if that's just Ian McKellen, who wandered in on set from doing something next door. And he just went over to the snack table, they hit action, and he's just like... I should point out, much like Rum Tum Tugger, old Deuteronomy is wearing a jacket that's the same color as the fur herself. So I don't know if this is fur that she shed, that she fashioned into a jacket, or if this jacket's made out of some of the babies she lost over the years. I know it's dark, I know it's grim, but... We are talking about cats here. The cats make their way into an abandoned theater, I believe. They do some weird shit here. They're, they're convulsing on the ground. They're dry humping. They're doing all sorts of frisky feline activity. They're even more horny now than they were five minutes ago, which seems almost impossible. And once in a while, the camera jumps back to Dench, who looks on just so proud. She's so proud of this whole whole thing. I mean, it really is just a caterbration of different walks of life coming together and looking like complete idiots. Jason Derulo is back, baby! And he is rum tum tugging his heart out right now. They're having a good old-fashioned dance-off, or a cat-off, if you will. And I think now is an appropriate time to point out that this movie's full of STRONG FELINE LEADS! If I can be perfectly honest with you, it's about time. A lot of different Jellico dancing taking place. We got breakdance Jellico dancing. We got ballerina Jellico dancing. We got Judy Dench Jellico dancing. Good. Good. And please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they all achieve climax at the same time. Because out of nowhere, they all drop to the ground in complete exhaustion. And I reached climax as well. <sighs> Sad sack Jennifer Hudson cat is back to bring down the temperature in the room. This is the worst song in the movie so far. Victoria, not to be outdone, answers back with her own stupid ass song, which is of course the worst song in the film so far. Old as dirt Deuteronomy also chimes in with a few of her own bars during this section. We then cut to Sir Ian McKellen, who's finishing off a nice bowl of milk 
before wheezing his way into the theater. <gasps> he is Gus the theater cat after all. That's what he tells me. His song's fun because he sings it in the third Katzen. Goes on for 45 minutes and it's the worst song in the movie so far. And right after he finishes, he stumbles backstage and gets sucked into a box by McCavity Cat. Skibbleshanks, the railway cat, tap dances into our hearts now. Every five minutes, a new cat shows up. It's so much fun. Yeah, Skibbles tells us all about himself. I'm Skibbleshanks. The rally cat. I'm a piece of shit. What you think about that? What's the point of this? There's no story. Nothing matters. I genuinely lost the plot. They are now in a line tap dancing across the railroad tracks because he is, of course, Skibble Shanks, the railroad cat. They go inside the fucking train from Polar Express. I half expected Deadeye Tom Hanks to come out, serve hot chocolate and do his little dance number from that film. But alas, no Tom Hanks to class things up. The song ends with Skibbles twisting all the way up into the sky because McCavity's up there pulling him in through his magical box to take him to wherever he's been taking all the other cats before anyone, even the audience, has a second to react to what the hell just happened. Taylor Swift's pussy gets lowered down via a giant moon. And she gets to sing a song, of course, about McCavity Cat's appearance. That's legitimately what the song's about, how McCavity Cat looks, in case there's any blind cats in the audience that can't fucking see him. I want to point out she's doing a bizarre English accent for some reason during this performance. She is an anthropomorphic cat too, but I still would. She's still a snack. This is the worst song in the movie so far. McCavity Cat. McCavity Cat. There's no one quite like our McCavity Cat. McCavity shat, McCavity splat, McCavity misspam me ma pam 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 tat. She sprinkles down catnip, which makes all the cats crazy and then sleepy. I'm pretty sure she's working for McCavity. She's trying to keep them all out of the running. Cavity drops down and ascends the stairs, ready to receive his Jellico prize, but Dane Duty Dench is not having any of it. McCavity takes her to the barge and makes her walk the plank. How is she going to get out of this one? It's nothing a simple song won't fix. You see, there's a magical cat named Mr. Mistopheles who's with the others that could possibly save her if he was just more confident in himself. Time is of the essence here. So naturally, we're going to sing a quick 48-minute song. She is mere seconds away from falling into the water, which I guess will kill her because she's old, frail, and dumb. So yeah, let's bring everything to a screeching halt. This is the worst song in the movie so far. But it worked, as Deuteronomy magically appears next to him unceremoniously. I, I was completely confused. I, I was like, did he conjured her? She just shows up there. She's like, hi, guys. Hi, I'm, I'm here now. I was on the plank, and now I'm here. No big deal. The rest of the cats are still fucked, but I'm back. Oh yeah, he's got a bunch of them back there. Hopefully they're dead by the time we find them. Alas, the cats don't die, but thankfully we have a freaking epic battle. I mean, you can't believe how cool this is. James Corden cat hacks up a fur ball. Rebel Wilson hits herself with the chain. And I guess Ian McKellen's cat Gus also has Gandalf magical powers because he uses a wizarding spell, which knocks off one of the pirate cats into the water, presumably killing the thing, hopefully killing the thing. Now for the moment, absolutely no one saw coming. Victoria, because she's such a perfect, pure, innocent cat, goes out in the cold and grabs Jennifer Hudson cat, bringing her ragged ass inside, dusting her off and showing her to the others who are frankly pissed. They're, they're furious. The cat claws are out, ladies. They're not having it. Hudson's gonna go ahead and perform the same song she did earlier. Somehow it's even worse now. This is the worst song in the movie so far. And I have to point out, she is in competition with herself at this point, singing her heart out, crying. There's snot coming down. She probably shat herself. It is just a spectacle. <laughs> I couldn't even imagine being on set 
where these actors have their motion capture suits on. Jennifer Hudson putting in this amazing performance, I guess. Not hopefully knowing that she's going to be CG'd into an abomination in a room full of disgusting CG creations. It's embarrassing. Everyone should feel bad being part of this movie. No one should like Cats. I, I deem it unlikable. Cats is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. And I've watched almost every single Polly Shore film. Dench goes up to Jennifer Hudson Cat, whose name is actually Grizabella. It's a, it's a solid name, Grizabella. And she says to her, you were the Jellicoe cat the whole time, or something, who cares? Jennifer Hudson's the Jellicoe cat, she's gonna be the one to ascend. Somehow this movie isn't over yet. Keep in mind, I'm in the living room watching this, which is kind of ironic, because every minute that goes by, I feel closer to death. Not much living going on, if you ask me. Grizabella hops on top of a chandelier air balloon and ascends into the heavens above, where she will hopefully come back, reborn! as an actress who never took on this role. That nasty McCavity though is not done yet. He tries to hitch a ride by jumping onto the balloon, but slips and falls on a nearby statue, cursing Grizabella saying, I'll be back for the sequel. Cats 2, Electric Jellico. This film mercifully comes to a close as old Deuteronomy sings one final song, that final crescendo, about how to properly address a cat. And the rest of the pussies join in for the final number. They're now singing directly at the audience, breaking the fourth wall. How is this movie not over yet? I'm only a couple feet away from the kitchen which contains a knife. I could end this all early. Dench is continuing to give us instructions about how to greet and talk to a cat. The sweet release of death is right behind me. All I have to do is grab a knife or some anal beads. This movie is over, but the cat people won't shut the fuck up. Why won't this movie end? Wait, wait. The song's coming to a close. Deuteronomy's looking at Victoria, telling her she's also Jellico. Okay, cool. I still don't know what that means. And they look on now as the chandelier balloon flies off into the sunset. And I think the movie is fun. Yes, it is finally over. Ugh. Oh my God. Well, that's Cats. Thankfully, it lost a dumb amount of money. And again, everyone who partook in this film should feel a deep sense of shame. I want to thank Matt once again for this wreck of catation And if you have a bad movie you think I would enjoy watching and talking about, join Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Sign up for that mithril tier level and say, Adam, this is for you, brah. Enjoy. You can also do the same thing on YouTube via the join button. There is a mithril membership there as well. I appreciate the support either way. There's a dollar tier, a $10 tier. It helps keep this one man operation afloat. And I appreciate any support you can give. All right, that's cats. Let me know in the comments if you saw this movie, your thoughts. Am I wrong? Is this a misunderstood work of art? genius on full display or am i right and this is a total pile of shit let me know like the video subscribe do all that crap and hopefully i see you next time under better circumstances a macavity cat macavity shat a skitty lit dit 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 cat